वेलकम आई एम सोनल मेरोत्रा कपूर यू आर वॉचिंग हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस फैक्ट्स एंड मिथ्स नाउ वी इवन डीलिंग विद अ ग्लोबल पैंडेमिक सिंस मार्च ऑफ 2020 ट्वेंटी एंड इट्स हैड एन इम्पैक्ट ऑन एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ आर लाइफ पैंडेमिक हैज बिन इफेक्टेड इन एवरी कॉर्नर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड फिजिकली इमोशनली एंड इवन फाइनेंशली जस्ट वेन वी थाट वी वुड कम टू टर्म्स विद द डेल्टा वेरियंट ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन कम्स अलॉन्ग ओमिक्रॉन एंड द टाइमिंग कूडेंट बी वर्स If you were looking forward to a holiday season with fewer restrictions than last year, COVID-19 induced anxiety may be rearing its ugly head. Mental health has long been recognized as a factor in physical well-being, a fact that has become starkly apparent during the pandemic as well. Stress, isolation, uncertainty can then exacerbate anxiety and depression in people with chronic illnesses like diabetes cardiovascular diseases leading to poor self care and worsening of health problems stress and sleep deprivation has also affected chronic metabolic conditions the most unfortunately it is a less talked about topic and there are many misconceptions and doubts about this as well we have a panel of experts today for you who will guide us regarding stress and its effect on metabolic disorder joining us today is dr amit kumar mbbs aims at delhi pg diabetes in from uk pg diab from usa diabetologist and a physician sugar care clinic in patna also with us is a dr nitish garg md dm fcc fcc usa fesc london director cardiology and interventional cardiology institute of medical science in jalandhar let me take the first question to dr kumar then dr kumar the omicron coronavirus variant seems to produce milder symptoms and uh, fewer hospitalizations than delta because of the vaccines or just the way variant is is it true that it is more in uh, sort of effective but less more in a way infectious but less deadly can we conclusively say that because as we speak remember the number of hospitalization might not be as high as delta but is going up steadily in major metros uh, yes thank you for inviting me for today so uh, you are right uh, it seems true to me also but uh, more research needed to prove your statement that new omicron variant of covid-19 is uh, having less symptoms less hospitalization uh, compared to delta waves but uh, it's true that uh, this is a super fast spread of this omicron but less deadly there are some uh, mild uh, difference between the symptoms uh, between the omicron and the uh, and the delta variant because this omicron has got joint pain uh, myalgia headache and uh, yeah this these these symptoms are new unlike the delta variant where the sore throat was more common this omicron has got the scratchy throat so uh, other thing is that that the loss of smell and the taste is uh, not prominent in uh, omicron variant so the main thing is that that uh, this omicron uh, got multiply in the throat where the delta variant was multiplying in the Uh, respiratory system so the lot of case right now we don't see breathlessness we don't see uh, decrease saturation decrease oxygen saturation we don't see pneumonia we are in the delta variant we were the, a lot of patients needed oxygen a lot of patients needed hospitalization uh, a lot of patients were suffering from pneumonia so these uh, symptoms are uh, not there with this omicron so uh, the symptoms wise it is very less severe compared to delta variant this but the spread is super fast because this uh, omicron has got mutation on the spike proteins a lot of mutation on the spike protein that's why i think it's spreading uh, very fast uh, um, and in the population right now we can see in the 10 days before india was having less than 10000 cases and today we got 58 more than 58000 cases in a day and it's uh, spreading very fast and maybe probably it will reach up to 5 lakh of cases per day uh, because uh, you know uh, india has 25% of population has not got even a single vaccine uh, so uh, because of the vaccination uh, the um, a lot of people who has got uh, two vaccines they have not got uh, this omicron variant infection but the one 
even the 25 percent populations are around 25 crores so it's a lot of population so those population are at very high risk of getting this uh, variant omicron variant and uh, you can see in delhi also and other parts of the country also around 80 percent of cases are coming as omicron because of this I see. Thanks so much for laying that out for us, uh, Doctor. Dr. Garg, if I can come to you next, is it true that people who have recovered from COVID can develop a reinfection with Omicron as well? How serious could that really be? Uh, as we know, the Omicron virus, it's uh, new to all of us. But the other countries' data, they, that is proving that it has a lot of mutations, which leads to escape of protection which is given by the previous infections or the vaccines uh, that is why we need to have a booster dose uh, but still a lot of people those who have antibodies those who were infected previously those who are having double vaccination they are still being infected and uh, if you see uh, the u.s data yesterday it was more than 10 lakhs people they were uh, infected with omicron so we need to be very cautious, careful, as uh, uh, our doctor there said that it is not leading to a lot of serious infection. Uh, other thing is less people are requiring oxygen hospitalization. But infectivity is so high that we need to not need to panic, but carefulness is very much required. Uh, but if you see the people who are already having heart disease, those who are having previously COVID, damaged lungs, if they are infected with Omicron, that can lead to more and more damage and in long term that can impact the health. So we need to see that people, those who, who are already having Omicron COVID vaccine, they should always keep care with no panic. Uh, this is it. Sure. Dr. Kumar, to you then, uh, what is a booster vaccine dose really and how does it help raise your body's immunity towards COVID-19? Also, if you could tell us the difference between a booster uh, and a third dose of the same vaccine. Yeah, a booster dose is nothing but uh, a, a means of strengthening one's immune system against a particular pathogen. It may be exactly the same as original vaccine. In which uh, case, the goal is to increase the magnitude of protection by producing more antibodies. So the, this booster dose is just an additional sort of uh, dose of the vaccine. In which case, uh, you would get a booster after the immunity from the initial dose naturally starts to win. The booster is originally designed to people for the maintain the level of immunity for a longer time. What the booster dose does that it gives a, a memory cells the crucial signal to re-engage when the viral attacks. So there are uh, in the immune system there is a uh, memory cell. So what happens with that when a, a virus comes into the body, this memory cells gives the signals to uh, make antibodies and to start getting actions. So this uh, booster dose is protecting from the infection for a longer period. So this uh, for the additional dose is uh, different. Additional dose is like just like some people like diabetes and any uh, like having immunocompromised patients. They don't have enough uh, antibodies even after the normal dose of vaccine which the normal people get. So antibodies are normal after the normal vaccination. But for the immunocompromised patient, the antibodies are not uh, as much as like a normal person when they get vaccine. So that those people, the immunocompromised people and the diabetic people need a third dose or extra dose for the same vaccines to get the equal number of antibodies in the body. So uh, this booster dose like uh, need a slightly less volume compared to the uh, normal dose of vaccine. So these are the two main uh, difference of the um, uh, booster dose and an additional dose. So uh, what happens that in the COVID-19 infection, uh, when the Delta came, the, the effectiveness of the, va uh, the vaccine decreased. And when the Omicron get, uh, came, then the effectiveness of this vaccine also got decreased because it has got a lot of mutation in the spike protein. So this vaccine is less active, but uh, this 
uh, even if uh, this is less active but the pa- it is protecting the persons it is protecting uh, everyone for like a serious infection it protecting from hospitalization uh, you can see the hospitalization rate is not as high as compared to delta variant and uh, this also protects from death also so if the unvaccinated people uh, the death rate is 14 times higher compare uh, to the vaccinated people so if someone has not got any vaccine the risk of death is 14 times higher than the one who is having fully vaccinated so a vaccine is uh, the it is really needed and i think uh, in india also uh, the vaccine the booster dose has just started and uh, we should take booster va- uh, dose uh, i think uh, according to the government's uh, rules and regulation uh, the children also should get vaccine right now and uh, we also need a vaccine for the less than 15 years of uh, children uh, so that uh, we can uh, make them safe because today in the newspaper a lot of children got uh, this omicron infection and the rate uh, in children is also very high nowadays so everyone should get vaccinated i think that is the main concern right now because uh, if uh, we are vaccinated we are safe i see Let's take the next question to Dr. Garg. Dr. Garg, we have been uh, seeing healthy and fit individuals pass away with sudden heart attacks recently. Can stress be one of the hidden causes of a heart attack and your views uh, on the same then? Yeah, stress is definitely having a lot of negative factor on health. Not only heart disease, but hypertension, brain strokes, cancer lot of gastric problem acidity gastric ulcers all these have been related to stress but what we see is of recent onset we are getting lot of people young people especially they are dying of sudden heart attacks the reason could be because in present day time if we see the covid covid disease itself leading to prothrombotic state which means there is a high chances of clot formation in blood and this can lead to many problems right from heart attack because if the clot formation in the coronary arteries it leads to sudden blockage in the arteries even without pre existing heart disease and uh, sometimes the clot formations occur in brain which can lead to brain strokes in legs we get people coming to us with deep vein thrombosis so lot of prothrombotic state is there because of high inflammation that is the reason we all doctors they are giving anti thrombotic or anticoagulant injections during covid period and even after covid recovery at least 3 months time we should give anticoagulation so there should not be any increase in clot formation which is what called prothrombotic state and uh, that leads to sudden cardiac death and the second cause of sudden cardiac death is lot of arrhythmias arrhythmias means abnormal heart rhythm that can also lead to sudden stoppage of heart and uh, that can be a hazardous especially young people those who are doing gymming and uh, i would say protein powder they are having a lot of negative impact on the health of young individuals that should be really taken with a caution the other thing is people those who are already having heart disease they should be very careful in present day time because if they have covid there is higher chances of clot formation pre existing heart disease over and above thrombus formation can lead to sudden heart attacks so in present day time those patients who are already having heart disease they should take their regular medications which usually involved and deep platelet treatment like aspirin or clopidogrel which are already stented or having bypass surgery so all people those who are having coronary artery disease they should take their regular medications regular blood pressure check up because in covid day time all these diseases can increase and lead to sudden heart attacks i see uh dr kumar if i can come to you next uh, people living with type 1 and type 2 diabetes are at increased risk of depression anxiety eating disorders due to their constant worry to keep their blood sugars and other health uh, parameters within control range right is it true um, and how can people with diabetes better manage constant stress how huge is stress a factor in managing diabetes 
Uh, yes, uh, you are right. Uh, when the patient gets diagnosed with diabetes, whether it's type 1 or type 2, the food restrictions are the same and uh, all the managements are the same. So, uh, whenever the patient gets uh, first time they know that they got diabetes, they get upset because they know that uh, they can't eat sweets for life long. So, uh, that is the, uh, that gives a stress and the people uh, generally feels uh, uh, that they are not able to eat sweets, they are not able to eat rice, they are not able to eat potato. These are the common things which the family members stops to that people. So, uh, that's why they get distressed, that um, they get uh, angry, they get anxiety uh, and sometimes uh, they stop going outside, they don't uh, go to the social uh, parties and all this because they know they can't eat uh, all these things and uh, that's why these are the main reasons why the people get depressed. Uh, and uh, in that when they get diagnosed with the diabetes so the first thing uh, is that uh, the people should know the patients should know uh, well what to eat and what not to eat and uh, they should get a proper education i think diabetic education is the very important for those type of patients uh, i think for the every patients of type 1 type 2 diabetes because this is a lifelong disease and the food habits uh, the medication and all the things uh, will continue for lifelong. So they should consult a proper diabetes specialist because the diabetes specialist will uh, answer all their queries and they can tell that, okay, this is just like a normal person, just you need uh, to eat less carbohydrate in your diet. And uh, so this part of education hmm. is important. So when the patients will know that, okay, they can uh, eat uh, um, all these things what the doctor has said then then mm. maybe their anxiety and their distress will be less so uh, i think they should consult a doctor they should also consult a dietitian because the dietitian is able to make a proper diet plan right. of what to eat what not to eat because every person is having their having their different food habits mm. so uh, according to their food habits according to a timing of uh, lunch or dinner a dietitian can make a, a chart that what time what to eat so in that way uh, they can uh, eat all the things or whatever the things they want to eat and uh, they have to restrict the sugar part so uh, right. this is important so in that way they can overcome with the stress and uh, important they points also there, do some important meditation points there, yeah, they can do meditation and they can do some uh, mm -hmm. relaxation exercise or yoga to relieve their stress all right, with that, let's slip into a break. We'll continue this conversation on the other side. Stay tuned. You're watching Health and Wellness, Facts and Myths. Such the khate hai, taake dunia ke bazaar mein aazadi sasti na bik jaye. Kursi pe baithne baalon ko. जमीन की अहमियत याद रहे सच दिखाते हैं हम ताकि पैसे की चमक से कभी हुनर ना पड़े फीका खुद गर्जी खोखला ना बना दे सोचने का तरीका सच दिखाते हैं हम ताकि अच्छे विचार और आदर्श बस किताबी बातें ना रह जाए एक बेहतर कल चाहते हैं हम इसलिए सच दिखाते हैं हम NDTV India Zubaan pe sach dil mein India NDTV wins the trust vote once again This is now the NDTV 24/7 has been awarded the most trusted news brand of India Still many say independent unbiased journalism of integrity Thank you for your endorsement of serious journalism From bartering to cash and coins to digital transactions, money is evolving. The way we make money is evolving. And now it's time to go crypto crazy. But can you shop online using crypto? Can you invest in crypto? Is it even legal? Well, we are here to bring you all the answers and decrypt the world of cryptocurrency. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness. Uh, 
facts and myths uh, we are in conversation with our panel of experts let's take the next question to dr garg dr garg if one suffers from hypertension one is more likely to experience mood uh, swings anxiety depression compared to people with normal blood pressure can hypertension not just accelerate anxiety but actually cause it as well yeah if you say anxiety and hypertension both are interrelated anxious people have more chances of uh, hypertension what we call is type a personality type a personality means they are always anxious uh, having high perspiration having tendency to do the things early restlessness so all these people they have higher chances of hypertension and uh, you see hypertension is one of the major risk factor of heart disease not only heart disease but brain strokes they are more common in people those who are having hypertension kidney disease and stress and anxiety is also related to all the diseases even leading to some of the cancer diseases they can be related to stress people those who are having hypertension if they keep their blood pressure well in range with medication or with diet control able to reduce their salt able to reduce their weight they can maintain their blood pressure and even we have seen that these patients those who do yoga regular yoga able to reduce their stress they can be off medications and we have seen young people those who are obese if we start medications along with that lifestyle modification all these measures of diet weight reduction and yoga we are able to reduce the dose of antihypertensive medication as well as sometimes we are able to off him totally there would not be any requirement of medications hypertension not only related to heart but if you see people having kidney diseases chronic renal failure pancreatic disease all these could be because of uncontrolled blood pressure so controlling blood pressure mm. controlling anxiety mm. stress level is very important especially in today's day time when there is lot of competitiveness a lot of stress in our life so that becomes more relevant in today's time that's true important both for hypertension and for diabetes uh, let me take that next question to dr kumar then dr kumar is it true that poor sleep quality and a late bedtime are associated with more pronounced post sort of uh, glycemic response to breakfast the following morning how does disturbed sleep patterns actually affect your uh, glucose metabolism uh yes uh, it's true that if you sleep late or if you are having a decreased sleep in the night following day your blood sugar postprandial can get increased uh, so there is a uh, high blood sugar levels after the poor sleep so uh, what happened that uh, there was a recent study recently by uh, professor chan and uh, boston school of uh, Uh, Harvard is China School of Public Health in Boston so uh, they have done one study regarding this mm, examined whether the night uh, night fluctuation the sleep fluctuation and uh, that is causing high sugar or not so uh, they published their data in diabetology there is one uh, journal of european association for study of diabetes recently that that find that bedtime routines and poor quality of sleep are associated with higher blood glucose levels and uh, higher postprandial gl- blood glucose levels next morning so uh, this study definitely proves that if you sleep uh, late in the night or if you are uh, t- uh, taking less sleep in the night then your blood sugar will be higher following after the breakfast so uh, we need a proper sleep in the night uh, because uh, sleep is important if you are not taking a good sleep then what happens that uh, it will increase the insulin resistance because less sleep uh, increases the cortisol level in our body so if your uh, cortisol level is high that will increase your blood sugar levels so the insulin resistance uh, will be high and then your blood sugar will go high uh, less sleep also cause uh, increase increase uh, inflammatory markers in your body the increase oxidative stress that also causing high blood sugar 
Then the other uh, inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein, that is CRP, IL-6, TNF-alpha, these are the other markers which gets uh, high and that uh, um, causing high blood sugar if you are not able to sleep properly in the night. So the, all these effects are causing high blood sugar. So sleep is very important and uh, you have to be a, a sound sleep and then your blood sugar will be better. If you are taking like eight hours of sleep in the night, then you are able to control your blood sugar in a better way. I see. All right. So the importance of sleep, uh, highlighting and coming out in ways of your health. So very, very crucial to keep that in check. Thank you both for joining us on today's show. That's all the time we have. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.